We are unspinning the political headlines with Scott Ross, executive director of One Wisconsin Now, and Bill McCaution, managing partner of Capital Consultants. Great to see you guys. On Monday, the U.S. Supreme Court decided not to take up Wisconsin's voter ID case. I'm wondering, were you guys surprised? What does this mean for voters and for future elections? Well, it means voter ID is the law of the land in Wisconsin now. And the Supreme Court sort of signaled this back in September when they delayed it. They, they didn't think there was enough time to implement it before the November election. but. Uh, now they've had a chance to review it. They kicked the case back, which means it's the law. And truthfully, it's, I don't think it's going to create much disruption here in Wisconsin. I mean, when you think about it, you have to use a photo ID to get Sudafed at Walgreens. So, I mean, it shouldn't be that tough for voters to get a photo ID. They're free at the Department of Transportation. I don't think it'll change much. Yeah, we always say that uh, buying Sudafed isn't in the state constitutional. The, the right to vote is. Um, fact is, they said they wanted to do this, the Republicans, because there was massive voter fraud. There is not voter fraud in the state of Wisconsin. Um, what is a fraud? Your partisan politicians like Scott Walker manipulating the laws for political gain, and I think that's what happened in this instance. We've seen zero in-person voter fraud in the state of Wisconsin since 2004, and that's with 15 million ballots cast. And is there another reason, Bill, that you would point to in terms of why this is important? I, I think it's important to, to protect ballot integrity, that people that our Wisconsin residents are the ones that are casting the ballots. And I'm, you know, you're making claims there is no fraud. People have been charged and arrested, including a congressman's son over in Milwaukee. So it's, uh, it does exist, and to the extent we can minimize it, we ought to. Let's talk about the election, the spring election, just to two weeks away from yesterday. Uh, the statewide race is for state Supreme Court. How is that shaping up? Well, I think it's a pretty bad sign for uh, conservative daily that the independent groups on the, on the Republican side are looking more towards undoing the election of Shirley Abramson in 2009 than they are focusing on this election here in 2015. The problem is, is it's caused Daley to do some unseemly things. He's taking $7,000 from the Republicans. He's out there making promises to special interest groups about how he's going to be on the court, which may be in violation of the judici judicial code. And uh, he's just really making some really bad decisions, I think, and I think that's problematic. I'd say Ju Judge Daly got in a little bit late, uh, struggled to raise money early on, but really the issue ma metrics shape up pretty well for him. Voter ID is now a central issue in this race. Uh, Supreme Court Justice Ann Walsh Bradley was opposed to the voter ID law. She was also opposed to Act 10. Those are things that sort of motivate conservative voters. So to the extent Daly can get that message out over the course of the next 10 days, he's got a shot. I mean, he's playing from behind at this point in time, but if uh, talk radio comes to his defense, uh, the issues are shaping up in his favor. He's, he's got a shot. Very quickly, let's talk about this Yahoo News report that talks about money that Menard donated to Governor Walker. Um, what do you have to say about this idea that there may be tax breaks involved? Walker dismissed the report yesterday. What's the truth here? I'd say it's nonsense. I mean, first of all, the, the story is based on two anonymous sources. Secondly, under uh, Citizens United and even prior to that, citizens can give whatever they want to a C4 or to some of these 527 organizations. It's all totally legal. Whether it's One Wisconsin Now or the Wisconsin Club for Growth, it doesn't matter. You have donors, big donors on both sides that give uh, large sums of money because they want to participate in the process. And if Mr. Menard did that, it was totally legal. Mm -hmm. One, John Menard has not given to One Wisconsin now, just so you know. Uh, second, <laughs> full disclosure. <laughs> full disclosure, right? Uh, second is, listen, this is what we've seen from Governor Walker. We did an analysis. 60% of all of the $1 billion that WIDEC has doled out have gone to Governor Walker's donors. And, you know, what we saw with this, I think, that is most troubling, um, is that when it comes to taking responsibility, psh, nothing. We know now, as soon as WIDEC comes out of this guy's mouth, the next thing that's coming out is an excuse. All right, we're, we're out of time. Scott, Bill, we appreciate it as always. And we will have analysis on the spring election night coming up April 7th. We'll see you right after the break.